Okay, welcome to MikeScottBaseball.com. Uh, today we're going to be doing something I call the chalkboard sessions. Uh, we're going to learn about how to keep a scorebook. Uh, I'm surprised how many people struggle with this or they don't quite understand the language that they see on a, uh, on a scorecard. So I've got my extra large scorecard here. We're going to be filling it in as we go, learning about the common notations, uh, common symbols that you'll see uh, in a scorebook and when you're keeping score, how to put them in the right places. So uh, let's get started and start looking at some of the basics. Okay, you can see that we have a diagram of our field here, and I've given each player on the field a number, okay, and these are standard numbers throughout uh, baseball. So, what we're going to do here is we're going to give each player a number. Our pitcher is number one. Our catcher is number two. Our first baseman is number three. Our second baseman is number four. You have to go across the diamond to your third baseman. Your third baseman has the number five. Your shortstop is number six. You go to the outfield, you always start with left field. Left field is number seven, center field eight, right field is nine. Now when a ball is put in play, you write down the number of who it was hit to. So if we had a ground ball to our shortstop, number six, and he picks it up and throws it to the number three player, which is our first baseman, that is a six to three play. And that's how you write it in the scorebook. Now, if we had a fly ball out to our left fielder, okay? goes out to the number seven player. You can write it a couple different ways. The standard ways of writing it usually are F7 for fly ball to seven. Sometimes you can just put the number seven since nobody else touched the ball to make the out. So you could just put a seven also. Now if you had a line drive to your second baseman, okay, a lot of times they'll write it out L4 for a line drive to the four uh, player who is your second baseman. You can write L04, but it's just another standard way of showing not just where the ball was hit, but how it was hit. Okay, let's move on to our first inning. Okay, now that we've covered some of the very basics, let's start taking a look at our scorecard here. First thing you need to do is you need to put in your lineup. So you list your batters one through nine. You put their positions that they're playing beside each player. And you put the number that they wear on the back of their uniform. You got your home team, your visiting team, and you got your date up there. Now, let's start taking a closer look at the scorebook design. Okay, let's take a close-up look at our scorebook design. This design has a couple things that we want to focus on. The main thing that we want to focus on is this diamond shape right there showing the field. This is where most of our notation is going to take place and most of the information about the at-bat or about the game is going to take place. Now this scorebook also has letters across the top. 1B is a single, 2B double, and then we have our triple, our home run, and our base on balls. If you take a look at some other scorebooks, sometimes they'll list them vertically along the side, and sometimes they'll even give you a couple more options, maybe a hit batter uh, or an error, an E. Okay. Um, now, other things about this design, you'll see that it has places for um, called strikes and balls. It has three across the bottom for every ball that's thrown, uh, and two across the top for uh, strikes. And uh, they give you a circle here to uh, identify who made the out and how many outs there are in the inning. So uh, let's start taking a look. We're going to get started with our first batter here. So our first batter, okay, uh, leading off. He is going to have, uh, let's say that he's going to get a single, but he gets a couple pitches thrown to him first. Let's say the first pitch was a ball. The first pitch of the game was a ball. I'm going to put a little dot right there. Second pitch of the game was a strike. I put a dot there, so that shows that the count right now is one ball, one strike. And then let's say that he got a hit. Let's say that he hit the ball, he got himself a single. We're going to come up here, we're going to circle the 1B. That shows that he got a single. Then we're going to draw a line from home plate, okay, to the first base bag right there. And then if you want, you can put where he hit the ball. So let's say that he pulled the ball into left field. Put a little dot up there. Sometimes that helps later on for coaches for uh, defensive alignment. If they see a guy constantly hitting a ball in a certain spot, maybe they change their alignment. So that's our first batter. He came up, got a ball for his first pitch, strike for his second pitch, got a single on the third pitch. He's now sitting on first base. Now just for uh, time-wise, I'm not going to do all the balls and strikes for the rest of the batters, but that is a good way to understand uh, how that works. So let's go to our second batter here. Let's say the batter, before he finishes his at-bat, this first batter decides to try stealing second, and he makes it. Okay. So before this batter finishes, this batter steals second. 
what we do is we draw a line to second base and then we put an SB for a stolen base and we put it right along the line where he went. Okay? So now this batter is still up. This batter is now on second base up here. Okay? So let's go back down to this batter. Now again, I'm not going to fill in all the balls and strikes, but a very common thing that happens in baseball, common notation also in a scorebook, is when a guy strikes out. When a guy strikes out, okay, swings the bat and he strikes out, you put a nice big K in the book. That shows that he struck out, okay? And since he's the first out of the inning, I'm going to come over here, I'm going to put a 1 in that circle. That tells me that he struck out and he's the first out, okay? Let's go down to our third batter. Okay. We've zoomed out a little bit to get a bigger picture of the scorecard. We had our first batter still sitting on second. We have our second batter who struck out. So let's go down to our third batter. Now let's say that this batter, okay, he came up and he had a double. I'm going to go over to my 2B right here. I'm going to circle the 2B showing that he got a double. I'm going to put in the book, okay, a line to first and then a line to second showing that he's now sitting on second base. But the other thing that we need to do is we need to go back up to the first batter who was on base. Now this batter actually came around and scored. So I continue all the way around. I make my uh, square. I color it in. Easy way to tell when a guy scored. You have a nice colored in box right there. And the last thing I'm going to do for this guy is I'm going to put a 2B right there between third and home. That shows that this guy scored okay on the double okay he came all the way around coming home he scored on this person's double right here so it's a great way to show how a guy scored and who hit him in now we go back down to this guy again if you want to put where the ball was hit let's say that he hit the ball here okay just for defensive alignment later on but the other thing you can do is you want to find a little space you want to put a little tally mark right there what I'm showing right there is that's an RBI okay he hit a ball uh, that drove somebody in so he has an RBI Okay, let's continue here. So right now we have one out with a guy on second. Okay, we're going to go to our uh, fourth batter here. Again, keeping things fairly simple to start off. Let's say that he hits a fly ball to uh, uh, left field. Okay, left field is our number seven guy. You can write this a couple different ways, but usually the common way is to write an F7 for a fly ball to seven. Some people will just put the number seven, but, uh, you know, common notation is usually an F7. Okay, now he was also the second out of the inning, so I'm going to put a two there. This batter did not advance anywhere on a fly ball to the left field, so that's all we need to do for that batter right there. Now again, keeping things very simple, let's go to the next batter in the order, okay? And again, let's just keep it simple. He hits a ground ball to the shortstop, shortstop picks it up, throws it over to first. That is a six to three, okay? He's out, so that's our third out of the inning. Okay, we put a three there. So that finishes the first inning right there. But as a scorekeeper, there's one more thing that you should do just about every time. You draw a line, nice dark line underneath the guy who made the last out. Okay, okay, maybe draw a line down there. But what you're trying to do is you're blocking off the next batter coming up. Okay, you want to make sure that you don't put any notation underneath the last out. You always got to move over to the next inning and start a new column. Okay, so let's get to the second inning. Okay, so here we are starting our second inning. Now, you can see that the uh, mark that we made here, blocking off the last batter, okay, you can mark it off any way you want, but you just make sure that you start the next inning over and you start with the next batter. So, let's say that this guy, he leads off and he hits a ground ball, but it's an error by the third baseman. Okay, so he's going to reach first base. We know that he's reached first base. And since this one doesn't have any notation for an error, what you do is you come down here beside where he's going to first and you put an E5. Okay, that shows that he got the first base on an error by the third baseman, so he's now standing on first base. So let's go to our next batter right here. Okay, now what's going to happen here is we're going to have this guy walk. Okay, keep things fairly simple again. Now we have a notation for a, a walk here, so I come over to the base on balls, circle that right there, and I move him to first base again. Now, we have to go back up to this batter here. Okay, we got to make sure that we move him over. We put a BB to show that he advanced to second base on a walk by the batter after him. Okay, so right now we have runners on first and second. Okay, now we're going to do something that's uh, a little tricky, but uh, it is definitely good to know. This batter coming up here, this next batter, he's going to hit into a double play. 
He's going to hit a ball to a second baseman. He's going to throw it to the shortstop and throw it to first. So it's going to be a four to six to three double play. Okay. Now what we have to do here, now that we know that he's hit into a double play, we have to augment and we have to fix everybody up above. So this batter was the one that got forced out at second. He is out four to six. Okay. This batter that led off the inning, he actually moved over to third. He got there on the four to six. Okay. So now we have to go back and make sure we have all our outs. So this guy was actually the first out. We put our one there. Okay. Trusky hit into a double play. He was the second out of the inning. We put our two right there. So right now we have just a runner on third and we have uh, two outs in the inning. Now let's go down to our number nine batter down here. Again, a very common thing that happens in baseball is a guy strikes out, but this time he strikes out looking. Okay, The pitch came in. He did not swing the bat. What you do for that is you make what they call a backwards K. You still keep it a K, but you make it backwards. It shows that he struck out looking. Now again, he's the third out of the inning. We put a three right there. We put a line underneath. Now usually as a nine batter you don't have to cross off the bottom, but again it's just good to get into the, uh, uh, the habit of crossing that off. Okay, so that finishes two innings right there. Okay, and let's move on to the third inning. 